Now, when you think of Robin Hood, it's synonymous with Nottingham, really, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. Nottingham and Sherwood Forest. And they've got an exhibition there of all the costumes that you wore, that Russell Crowe and Kate Blanchett wore, in the castle itself. Yeah, well, you know, that is going to be a fascinating exhibition and uh, because Janty Yates, the, the lady who uh, invented the costume, is an absolute stickler for detail. I went in for more costume fittings on this than I think any other film. And you may not know it, but underneath the, the, the first layer of clothing are another six layers of clothing, including chain mail, because uh, she was very keen to make sure that uh, undershirts, tabards, are all completely authentic. The attention to detail uh, is typical Ridley Scott, really. I mean, down to the heavy chain mail, and you see that in the movie. You also see, like, a cook, you know, giving soup during battle, and, and it's those scenes that make it really historically ac accurate and wonderful. Yeah, Ridley's very keen on historical accuracy. I think what he loved about the story was being able to take the reality of the time, which is a guy could have been away at the Crusades for years and years and years, come back and not know his real history. Um, Ridley's also fascinating because he, as well as having an amazing overview and being a talented kind of action director, he's a stickler for detail, much in the same way Janty is with costumes. So you would be doing a scene which had maybe 1,500 people on a beach in Wales uh, shooting some uh, huge battle sequence, and he would come in and adjust a tiny bit of your costume. And also constantly uh, aware of the reality and the truth of what you were wearing, how you were behaving. And that, as an actor, is exactly what you want from a director. Let's talk about those battle scenes, because you loved it, really, didn't you, getting involved in all of that? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, uh, uh, people pay good money, don't they, to recreate that kind of thing. And knowing that you were on a horse that had an original saddle, knowing that you were using a sword that was made in exactly the same way as the swords would have been, that the costume is completely authentic, um, and then you're fighting guys, you know, it's like... It's, it, it's almost exactly how it would have been. And what fascinates me is how these guys ever fought at all because the weight of the chainmail and the armour means that all those sequences you see where people in armour fight for hours and hours, I can't believe that's true. I think they may be two or three blows and they all had to lie down and have a cup of tea. <laughs> now you filmed those battle scenes on the coast of the Pembrokeshire coast on fresh water west beach. Mm. What was it like? I mean, you were two weeks there, multi-camera shoot, very complicated. One of the most beautiful spots on on the earth. I mean, that beach is absolutely gorgeous, and we got there, and it's breathtaking. Um, seeing the, you know, the, the circus come to town on that beach was absolutely impressive. I was there with my family and my two small boys, and they were absolutely riveted by the event because it was high summer, boiling hot. Uh, it was like a festival. I mean, there were. I think 1,500 people knocking around on that beach at times, 15 cameras, a helicopter. It was a massive undertaking and uh, in one of the most beautiful spots I think I've ever filmed. Uh, and also his attention to detail meant that we filmed in uh, the beautiful countryside around London and, and a village was built there. They actually built a village. They planted crops and because the film was delayed by a year, those crops were then harvested. It was as if we really had something very authentic in the middle of the English countryside. The minute detail of the building of these villages, mm. the building, you know, Nottingham, not in Nottingham, but in, in, on the Surrey countryside, was, was awesome from Thatcher's to the, the accuracy was, was tremendous. Yeah, the chap who owned the land allowed them to build a village. And again, Ridley's attention to detail meant that all the huts, uh, the layout of the village, the crops, the way those crops were harvested were all done in an authentic style, as much as we know about that period. Um, so working within that as an actor means that you you don't really have to create it in your imagination because it's all there for you. You love playing the villain, don't you? Yeah, the villain is uh, is very interesting. I mean, because the challenge is to find out how to make them accessible. And and this Robin Hood, it's a different take, really. Yeah. What's um. Because it's been told many, many times, this story. I mean, uh, myths and legends have existed since 850 AD. I think there was a Robin the Beheader or something who lived in a forest way, way back. And, you know, the incarnations have been many. And you can take what you want from the story. And the idea of somebody who takes from the rich and gives to the poor seems to be the overriding thing that's come out recently. But I think it's fascinating that they've, they've explored the idea of where this guy actually comes from.